Shalom. Um, today I wanted to do a video about um, the evils that are multiplied in the earth. Uh, another one of my videos uh, read about Alexander the Great and um, just a little about him being from the land of Chittim. And uh, we know that the children of Chittim became one with Edom. And as they grew in number and uh, they actually took over many lands, Alexander and his cohorts, his people, and uh, he even had tributaries or other nations that he conquered that uh, were tributary to him and his people. So, and they also continue to uh, do the things that they do. And uh, they became the Greeks and Romans, or they were the Greeks and Romans. Uh, 1 Maccabees 1 and 9, and after his death they all put crowns upon themselves. So did their sons after them many years, and evils were multiplied in the earth. So, I wanted to touch on a couple of these evils that multiplied in the earth. Um, one of these evils, God definitely uh, a says it is an abomination um, and doesn't approve of the most high sees this as an abomination which is sodomy that's why he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah but this sodomy this particular type of sodomy was prevalent during uh, the Greek and Roman rule and I just looked it up um, I actually heard this word from um, um, another uh, Israelite guy uh, that I watch sometimes and he's very very thorough uh, uh, Maccabean spirit I think he's with uh, GMS uh, camp shout out to him uh, but I looked it up for myself uh, pederasty or pederasty is a word Basically, coming from, um, I think it's coming from, or uh, the word pedophilia comes from this word. Because, and even though in Wikipedia right here it says not to be confused with pedophilia, um, it's basically the same thing. Pederastry is a usually erotic homosexual relationship between an adult male and a pubescent or adolescent male, or the love of boys. So, um, this was something that was prevalent during the Greek and Roman era. And I just wanted to touch on this a little bit. Um, look at this sculpture here i don't know if that's a vase or what but just look at the the picture here this is a grown man holding a boy in, in a lustful way and uh there are a couple other pictures down here um there's two a man and a youth in that picture down here you have uh, two naked, uh, a naked man and a naked boy. Uh, it says youth holding a net shopping bag filled with walnuts. A love gift draws close to a man who reaches out to fondle him. You know this kind of sick. Oh man, the evils multiplied in the earth. And the Greeks had many sculptures, statues that you can look up 
the people really didn't I, I didn't even pay attention to it as I was growing up when I saw them uh in books and encyclopedias and things of that nature. You even probably have some uh somewhere in uh museums and uh near certain monuments uh where they have naked men pretty much. And uh next to those naked men are naked boys. It's like the pictures of uh, that they depict small boys being angels, they'll be naked. Um, here you have, uh, this says, Jupiter abducting Ganymede, first century A.D. Roman statue. And there's that eagle. As described throughout the scripture, these people um, try to represent themselves as the eagle. So, I just wanted to touch on this a little bit. Uh, these are the people that created um, the so-called churches. For the Roman Catholic Church was the first church after Christ perished and the Israelites uh, were killed. So... Um, Let's see what happens with the Roman Catholic Church. Here's an article that's recent. This was last month. A Long Island priest steps aside as allegations of sex abuse investigated, the diocese says, or diocese. Um, it says William Br Breslowski agreed to step away while the diocese of Rockville Center investigates allegations he sexually abused a middle schooler near, nearly 40 years ago, a church spokeswoman said Saturday. And this isn't new. This isn't new. They do this all the time. And they get away with it. Slap on the wrist or they get moved to another place so they can do the same thing. A Roman Catholic priest has stepped aside from his ministry while Church officials investigate allegations that he sexually abused a middle schooler nearly 40 years ago and had an inappropriate in interaction with two adults in the 1980s, the Aussies of Rockville Center said. Uh, William Br Brasowski agreed to step away while the Aussie investigates those allegations. Sean Dolan, a spokesman for the Aussies, said Saturday. Berlowski, who was ordained in priest, as a priest in 1979, most recently served as the pastor of the Church of St. Anthony of Padau in Rocky Point. He could not be reached for comment. We are saddened by these allegations and will do everything we can to ensure that a fair and just determination is made. They never have a fair and just determination. Even if they're found guilty, there's usually a slap on the wrist. Most of these priests don't go to jail. You know, things of that nature. Then I wanted to play this clip. This was last month as well, or a few weeks ago, with the Pope. So let's just take a listen. Let's just take a listen here. What you're seeing right here is oh, sixty thousand dollars. Did you know the average profit on a flip is sixty thousand dollars? And ironically, the claim is explosive that Pope Francis covered up sexual abuse in the American Church. But is it true? I won't say a single word about this, he said. The allegation is that he knew Cardinal Theodore McCarrick was abusive to adults, but did nothing for years until the Cardinal resigned last month. In an mm. unprecedented letter, Archbishop Carlo Vigano claims Francis heads a conspiracy of silence, like in the Mafia. Set a good example, like he mafia. urges, and resign. Vigano, though, offered no evidence that he is an arch-critic of Francis. He produced this a document when Pope Francis was in the ground zero of clerical sexual abuse island. So it was designed for maximum uh, damage to Francis. Tonight, a prominent U.S. cardinal spoke out. My experience with the Pope is that as soon as he knows about something, 
the axe on it. It's a church still reeling from Pennsylvania's grand jury report detailing sexual abuse of children by hundreds of priests. This weekend in Ireland, the Pope begged forgiveness for similar crimes amid street protests and a church divided. Well, these have been Whoa, the most minute, challenging days of... So the word I just looked up, I think I just saw on this lady's sign that was protesting. Let's go back. Let me see. Right. Okay. Popes protects pedophiles. Let me see if I can. Right there. The church protects pederists. So, and that's the same word I just looked up, right? Pederasty. Exactly. That's the nail in the coffin right there. So, the Pope knows about of course he knows of course he knows he's the head of the roman catholic church so what i wanted to do was let's go back to um uh, first i wanted to read this scripture about um uh, sodom this is spiritual sodom and the nations that are like it and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city which it, it which spiritually is called sodom and egypt where also our Lord was crucified. So, spiritual Sodom, meaning that sodomy is still going on today, even though God destroyed, the Most High destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. In the, in the end days, uh, Sodom would also be categorized as the daughter of Babylon, which we live here in America and in a couple other nations. It's their ways, not just the land. Uh, so I looked up the history of uh, the Roman Catholic Church and it pulled this up, History of Christianity. Um, it says the Roman Catholic and Eastern Orthodox Christianity spread to all of Europe in the Middle Ages since the renaissance era christianity has expanded throughout the world and become the world's largest religion so the roman catholic church who uh, uh keeps going who keeps the pedest pederasty going or pedophilia going is is uh created a, a religion that spread throughout the world and is now the largest religion in the world. During its early history, Christianity grew from a first century Jewish Jewish following, and we know that Jewish just means uh, sort of a Jew, Jewish following to a religion that existed across the entire Greco-Roman world, the Greeks and the Romans. And we know that the Greeks and the Romans are of the children of Chittim and Edom, the Edomites, these people, Greco-Roman, all right? So um, let's see what they were actually doing before they killed Christ. And I, I still don't understand why people would follow this and they know that these are the people that actually slew Christ. Even though there were Jew Jewish or Jews who said, yeah, kill them. But they didn't actually pull the swords out. They didn't actually uh, put him on the, hang him on the tree and stab him in his side and poke nails in his hands and feet. The Jewish people didn't do that. The Romans did that. The Romans were in control of uh, those cities back then and took them over. And evils were multiplied in the land, just like First Maccabee said. Anyway, uh, the Roman persecution of Christians ended in A.D. 324 when Constantine the Great decreed tolerance for the religion. Constantine uh was one of these leaders that actually changed the times and i'm gonna do a video on that 
as well. He changed the times as far as uh, the months and uh, that's why you have uh, let's just say uh, if you look at um, the, the people that think that Christ was born in December and when actually scripture says he was born in the springtime which will be around March, April, you know, um, but Constantine changed the time. Deca, which is the prefix for December, means 10. So that will be actually the 10th month of the year, you know. Um, and if you go on down, Oct is, is 8. The prefix for October is 8. So that's really how you count the months. Oct, the the November, November or no, November really means nine, and Deca December would be ten. So the first real first month of the year really is in March, if you count it that way. But Constantine was one of those that changed a lot of things. He put a lot of uh people together. Uh, put a lot of religions together as well to make everything one. Uh, but we'll, we'll do another video on that. Uh, matter of fact, let's, uh, let me see. I think I pulled up a script. Yeah, this talks about Constantine or that this is a prophecy that they would change the times. And he shall speak great words against the most high. And shall swear out the saints, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. So, this was a prophecy to happen. So, it did happen. Constantine the Great changed the times, and they continue to change the times and laws. Uh, against the Most High, and they speak out of. Let's let's see why they spoke out against the Most High. Why why would they speak out against the Most High? You know why? Because they had their own gods already. They had their own gods. The Greeks and Romans believed in other gods. Let's let's go down a list of gods that they had. They didn't believe in the God of Israel. So why would everyone think that? The Romans and Greek people who were running the earth at that point in time and who still run the earth, these Edomites, uh, why would they think that these people would be living under the rule and guise of the Israelites' God? They had their own gods. This is who they believed in. Greek name for the main god was Zeus. The Roman name for that same god was Jupiter. So they were the same people who believed. They just changed the names when they became Romans. When the Greeks became Romans, they changed the name to the name to Jupiter. The sky god Zeus rules Mount Olympus. His weapon is the thunderbolt, and his bird is the eagle. There's that eagle again, as as it states in Obadiah. Thou who exalt thyself as the eagle. Let's, let's, let's scroll down a little more. Hera, whose Roman name is Juno. So her Greek name is Hera. Her Roman name is Juno. Zeus's wife and sister. How is it his wife and his sister? Hmm. Evils multiplied in the earth. Poseidon. Roman name Neptune the god of the sea. Hades, Roman name Pluto, the brother of Zeus. Hades rules the underworld, the realm of the dead, with his wife Persephone. So they had their own beliefs already. They did not believe in the Most High. So that's why it says here that, and he shall speak great words against the Most High. They were speaking against the Most High back then, and now they have confused the world to believe, to try to believe in the Most High, 
but there is no repentance for Esau. So let, let, let me look that up. Hebrews 12 and 17. For ye know, for ye know how afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it diligently with tears, or he sought it carefully with tears. So there is no place he can't repent. Esau can't repent. The Edomites can't repent. There is no place of repentance. He doesn't believe in the same God. They don't believe in, in the God of our fathers. They make you think that they do, but they, they do not. And that is why the Christ our Hamashiach, the Savior, was sent forth for the Israelites. And when he had, uh, uh, when he was alive, he told the disciples to do what? These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them. This is Matthew uh, 10 and 5. And commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles and into the city of the Samaritans, enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So when they went into, uh, when they went into the other cities and countries, they went to find the lost sheep of the children of Israel. Those who were taken captive through all the captivities, those who are prophesied to go into all nations to be scattered into the four corners of the earth. That's who they went to talk to. They didn't talk to uh, the Grecians and Romans who they knew were Edomites. Back then, they knew who the Edomites were. Now, today, we, we none of our people know. Unless you unless you're watching or or learning uh, from Israelites now, unless you're learning from people who actually read the scriptures and not just giving you uh, some false hope or just giving you scriptures that talk about uh, yeah you can live abundantly. Of course, yeah, you can live abundantly and you can have faith uh, and uh, living a good life. And living a prosperous life. But that's not all that the scriptures is about. Not at all. You can't forget the prophets. You can't forget the prophets. Let's look that up. See what Christ said about that. See what he said about that. Think not that I, this is Matthew 5 and 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but fulfill. So he didn't come to destroy what the prophets prophesied. He came to fulfill the sacrificial law. So you don't have to sacrifice any animals anymore or have any blood, uh, anything having to do with blood. He shed his blood for it. You don't have to kill your neighbor after they commit a sin against you. Stone them. Anything have to do with blood, he, he actually fulfilled that law. 
For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. All hasn't been fulfilled yet. We're not in this in the second we're not in the kingdom yet. So all has not been fulfilled yet. He says until heaven and earth pass. Earth heaven and earth has not passed. So one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law. So the law still stands until all be fulfilled. All has not been fulfilled. Everything in Revelation has not been fulfilled. I think that the seals are broken, that we are like in the sixth seal at this time for the times of uh, uh, the heathens are over there uh, in Syria right now. The Euphrates River's, River is dried up and they're over there in the Valley of Jehoshaphat, in the, in the Valley of Decision, uh, starting to war with each other. That's the sixth seal. Anyway, uh, I just wanted to make this a short video about evils. I, I might do a part two to this. Um, people all over the world follow the Roman Catholic Church. And in actuality, they are sodomites. And they continue to do pederastry um, and put homosexuality out into the world their their whole premise is based on Babylonian uh, culture even the the big hat that they wear the priests wear or, or the Pope or whoever they wear that's a Babylonian hat used to be a fish hat used to have fish eyes on the side of it you can google it that's straight babylonian so why would you follow people like this and no one actually does anything about it and they control most of the so-called christian world when christ did not follow any babylonian culture the most high uh, uh the most high son did not follow any of that Christian means follower of Christ. And the, the, the 12 disciples definitely did not teach any of that. And with that, I'm just going to say Shalom and uh, have a good Shabbat. And the evils multiplied in the world. And a church divided. Well, these have been the most challenging days of Francis's papacy, facing dissent in Ireland, open revolt here in the Vatican, and in the U.S., a church tonight that is still in turmoil. Hey, NBC News fans, thanks for checking out 